It's hard to believe that Summer of Anime 2015 is already coming to an end. It feels like it literally was just yesterday I sat down and started reviewing Summer of Anime. And it's already coming to an end and we're getting into fall. And the year is almost done. It's just, it's really hard to believe how time flies when you're having fun watching anime, reading manga and stuff. And I just want to take a few moments to say, Chibits, you've all made this year quite a great year. I mean, if it wasn't for all of you, just being there to support me, help us build this community, sending wonderful letters, and just so many things, it just this year wouldn't have been as great as it was. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart right now, thank you very much. Now, I want to say something real quick before I actually dive into fan mail and stuff. I kind of think I know what I want to do for 80k Chibits now. I think I do. I think I want to do a live stream. I think I want to do a Q&A live stream or just, you know, have a live stream talking about stuff. Maybe a 30 minute to an hour live stream. Just talking to Chibits, answering questions. And I want to do something like that very soon. And most likely for 80k, I will do that. Because many of you Chibits want me to do a live stream. And I decided I want to do something like that. And I do want to do something similar for 100k Chibits. But I don't really know exactly what I want to do for that. I want to make it extra special because that's going to be something very big. But that's far off in the future. So I'm not going to think about that for now. But for 80k Chibits, when we do get there... Uh, like I said, I'm thinking of doing a live stream now. I'm just going to say real quick, when we hit 80k, as soon as we hit it, doesn't mean I'm going to instantly do the live stream. I'm going to probably schedule it like a week in advance, let everybody know when it's happening, for everybody can understand what ske the scheduling of the upcoming live stream will be. And that's kind of what most likely is going to happen. But what I want to get into, though, is to say... Since so many of you Chibits have requested, like, you know, a live stream for the past couple months, I've seen it here and there, and you've some of you have asked for Q&As and stuff, I think I'll do that. It, it'll be very fun to interact with you Chibits to just get to talk with you. I might do it on some form of a Friday or Saturday, you know, weekend, because not everybody, you know, can actually watch it in the middle of the week. So I want to try to put it somewhere on Saturday or Friday, maybe Sunday, depending on how Sunday is, but it'll be on probably one of those days when I actually do the live stream. But, I just wanted to mention that real quick before I get into other matters. Now, if you have yet to see the video I uploaded earlier this morning, like very early, like 2 o'clock in the morning, I uploaded what Chibi will watch for Fall 2015 of anime. If you're interested in those type of videos and you like to see what I'm going to watch for the upcoming season, go check it out because I put it up earlier today and if you've yet to see what's coming up for the next anime season and you're interested to see what I'm going to be starting and reviewing, then go watch the video and you might see something you might like. And... I also decided to put that out very early this uh, time around because I was actually going to wait until anime started ending. That's usually what I do. I start waiting until like the first episode start ending on a series. But since there's been so many delays and I mean I was kind of free yesterday and today's kind of like an easy day because it's just Gaku, uh, Gaku Garashi and then it was happiness and then this vlog. It wasn't really much to do so I decided to fit in you know what Chibi will watch for fall 2015 because I'm like yeah I guess today's the greatest time as ever to do something like that and it'll give me more time to catch up on other series when I could you know be reading or watching things when I was probably going to be working on that video so yeah it gives me some extra time to work on stuff like that but now that I've said that I want to ask how has your week been Chibits has it been good has it been bad let me know your thoughts in the comments below about that because I mean you know how I feel about that and I saw a funny comment actually last week which was pretty fucking hilarious I got a good chuckle out of it a Chibits said like Ch a Chibi prove that you read this comment, comment to me right now, and like, you know, this Chibit said, like, you know, how their week was, and I proved, and it was like on the bottom, and I just commented, I just did a smiley face, like, eh, <laughs> so, yes, Chibit, so I do read all your comments, I don't reply to everything, but I do read, at the very least, 99% or 98% of all comments I've received, the only time I probably miss comments is when I am asleep, or if it's like comments from a very old video, because so many videos, so that's the only thing I think when I miss comments, but when it comes to recent comments that come out on newer videos and stuff, you can bet your ass I'm up to date with those type of stuff. So you have nothing to worry about. I do read all your comments and I take in all the feedback you all provide. So I just want to say thank you very much, Chibits, for that as well. So let's get into some fan mail. Now, I got quite a few letters here today, actually. There's only three boxes and a bunch of letters, which, hey... I love letters, I love getting to see your thoughts, and you all ask me some really cool questions from time to time, and it's really fun getting to interact with you and just answer some of the things you all ask. So, we have, like, two little postcards here. We have, um, 
a Tokyo Ghoul, Kaneki Kim, and we have another Tokyo Ghoul right there. Now, I can't show you the other side of this because, you know, I'm going to keep the full name private of the Chiba that sent it. But the Chiba that sent these two cards are the same, and it's from Brandon. So, I want to say thank you very much, Brandon, for sending these two little cards. And, let's see, which one should I read first? Um, okay. Good luck trying to pronounce my last name. Okay, so you want me to say your last name. Brandon Gertatonsky. Gertatonsky. Uh, Gert... Kurtatonsky. Fuck, dude. Just let me know in the comments. Let me know, Brandon, if I pronounced it right. Um, you say, good luck trying to pronounce my last name. And then this one says, thank you for your amazing reviews from Brandon. My YouTube name is Unbox Game, uh, Gamefly. Game, Gamerfly. So, thank you very much, Brandon. I'll be looking forward to your comments and to see if I pronounced your name correct or not. And see, little postcards like this I really love. I mean, I, I love getting to see, you know, just what Uchibits think. You know, this is some really inspirational stuff. Just to see how Uchibits care enough to send a letter and just say, you know, you know, you care and thank you. You don't really know how much that means to me. That really means a lot, actually. Like, there, I've said this before in the past, but there's many times I just wake up in the morning... When I get my coffee and I'm sitting down just drinking my coffee before I start reviews, watch anime, or read manga chapters, I'm just sitting here thinking like, I am truly, I'm truly blessed and I'm lucky to have so many good people, so many good chibits just watching over me and, you know, building this community, our second family together. And, you know, words of support like this, it really just hits me right in the fucking Kokoro all the time. And I'll never forget the meaning behind these words and, you know, you guys' effort to send stuff like this, so thank you. Okay, so the next letter we have here is from Connor. So, thank you very much, Connor. We got a little letter here. And it feels... Okay, so we just have a paper letter. Might be some drawings in here. Let's see. Let me open this up. Okay, so we have a long letter. Give me a second. Before I read this letter, I'm looking at the other one just in case. And, okay. Anime recommendations. Okay, so this is the first one I'll read first. Look at that. My chibi hair. <laughs> a lot of you like my hair. I, I'm very shocked about how so many of you like my purple hair. I expected so much more from you, chibits. You know, just saying. But apparently, it's not bad. I mean, my first attempt at dying hair, I mean, it's not perfect. I know for a fact it's not. I'm not even going to deny that. But it's... I mean, I'm, I'm surprised, and thank you. I, I also want to thank you for that, Chibits, too, for supporting me on that. But let's get to reading this letter. So, Dear Chibi, I'm a recent fo follower of yours on YouTube, and I've noticed most of your recent videos are 60 frames per second. Yes, indeed, they are, actually. I've had 60 frames per second for a very long time since, like, I started this channel, actually, when I got my camera. It's not that I don't care about frame rates, but I think it's a good choice. Can you please tell me why is that? Well, 60 frames per second, it adds more movement. It's like, if it's 30 frames per second, like, when I, let's say I move my hands right now, like you see me move my hands. I don't know how YouTube really shows it, but when I'm editing the video when it looks 60 frames, the movement of your hands look very solid. Like, there's no, like, missing fragments in between the movements. Because I may know maybe some of you cheapets have probably seen some videos like this, but have you ever seen it to where someone, like, moves in a video or something, a recording, and it looks like their body is, like, a shadow, like it's lagging behind, like you see a shadow of the body moving? That's kind of the frame rate in a certain sense. Now, I'm not the best when it comes to frames, but with more frames, added it allows it to everything look like a little bit more solid and it flows a lot better with the movements and stuff and that's kind of why I want 60 frames per second because of how everything flows of course it takes a lot longer to render a video I mean if I'm trying to render like a Tokyo Ghoul video that is an hour and 18 minutes long well damn it takes fucking six hours I I'm not joking like when I am rendering an hour video, just, I'm putting this in perspective for you to understand. An hour video takes six hours to render. That means I cannot touch my computer and do anything with my computer until the video is said and done. So I can't even watch my animus or read manga or comments or anything unless I use my, you know, 
my tablet. So the point I'm getting at is, is when I do those type of videos that's very long with 60 frames and stuff, it just it kills my computer and I'm like, can't do shit. And that's kind of why sometimes reviews are very late because of that. And when it comes to natural reviews like, uh, you know, Gako Gurashi that came out today or Happiness, usually it can take up to maybe like 30 minutes to 45 minutes, even 50 minutes depending if I, you know, render like two to three things at once. So that's kind of how that goes, but... There's the rendering times and why 60 frames is good and bad at the same time. Also, do you have any plans to collaborate with any other anime reviewers? Actually, yes, I do. I have no issue with, you know, collabing with fellow anime reviewers and discussing things and making a podcast. It is something I have thought about for a very long time. I've wanted to make a some form of podcast or a monthly podcast or something. Maybe not a weekly podcast, but a monthly podcast. I've wanted to do something like that for a very long time, just to sit down and talk with others about anime and manga and just, you know, have a discussion of what inspired you to make anime reviews. I've answered this question a little bit, uh, actually quite often in the past in many vlogs beforehand, but I guess I'll repeat it now because maybe not many of you newer achievements know about it. So, the reason why I started to be an anime reviewer is because I wanted to be able to share my thoughts on anime and manga because there's many times in the past, like, I would read a chapter or watch an episode and... I would have no one to talk to. I I'm not lying. I would have no one to talk to about a series or anything, and it was very lonely. I'm not going to joke about that. It was lonely, and I've always wanted to share my passion for anime and manga, and so eventually it kind of made me arrive to becoming a YouTuber and making videos that center around anime and manga to be able to express that passion. And so yeah, that's why I started doing anime reviews. Here are some questions that aren't anime related. You can say that these are off topic. Do you like Star Wars? Yes, I do. Now, I'm not a, a mega Star Wars fan. I, I'm not. I'm not even going to pretend I am. But, I do like Star Wars. If so, are you excited to see Episode 7? Yes, I cannot wait to actually see another Star Wars. I'm curious to see where it's going to go. On the gaming side, what video game franchises do you like? Halo, Diablo, World of Warcraft, Starcraft... I like the um, Final Fantasy series, I like Record of Agarst War franchise, and I like Oddworld, Oddworld's a really fucking good game, Castle Crashers is great, it's Elder Scrolls, and I Fallout, Fallout. Those are some of my favorites and that quickly come to my head. Okay, for me, I prefer Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts. Oh, Kingdom Hearts, yes. I haven't played uh, the newer versions of Kingdom Hearts, which I need to get back to playing that because Kingdom Hearts 3... Uh, I need to get a PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4, fuck. Okay, the Chibi community is ever-growing. Keep up the good work, and good luck to you, Chibi. Likewise to you, and likewise to all of you fellow Chibits. Hopefully you all have great luck ahead of you, and our family continues to grow. From Connor, P.S. Sorry for my crappy handwriting, but this is my first letter. I wish I could get you something, but I'm broke. The letter is all I need. No, that's all you need to worry about. This letter... The words, it's the thought that counts, actually. In a sense, it's the thought that counts and the words behind this letter that matter most to me. Seriously, I I'm not denying that. I love reading your guys' letters. It it's a really good hobby to do each week, actually. Just sitting down and seeing what you all think. It gives me so much emotion. And it gives me drive to continue doing things on YouTube and just have fun doing with it. And just interacting with all of you. It's just it's very fun to see what you all think. And it allows me to improve as an individual, too, when it comes to being a YouTuber. So thank you, Connor. Now, this is what you say on your next one. You say, my anime recommendations. Trigun, I, I know about that recommendation. Akira, I've heard a lot of good things. Ava, Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. Already watched that very fucking good movie. Um, anything from Studio Ghibli. Uh, I've seen majority of their shows. Uh, Howl's Moving Castle is fucking amazing. Oh my god. I love Howl's Moving Castle. Um, best anime TV series, Cowboy Bebop and Gurren Lagann. Best anime films, Akira and Red Lion. I, I haven't seen Akira, but Red Lion is bay. Oh, that's a bay fucking movie. Oh my god, that was a really good movie. Um, best anime character, Mel. Spike from Cowboy Bebop. And best anime character, female, Rey from Ava. I haven't seen Ava, haven't seen Cowboy Bebop, so I can't really say if they're good or not, but... 
Chibits that's watching this currently right now, do you agree with Con Connor's, you know, best characters? I mean, everybody has their different taste. Let me know your thoughts. I mean, are those good characters? Are they bad characters? Because I really don't know anything about them. I I'm, I'm sorry, I don't. So I can't really give a good thought on that. But thank you very much, Connor, for the great letter. Okay, so yo buddy, still alive. Mihashi Mike here. Okay, so I want to call you Mike. Oh yeah, Mike! Oh, I, I remember you sent something before, and I, I won't forget that. Okay, looks like I'm back again, Cheebs. Been a while, huh? Yeah, it actually has. Anyways, thought I'd send you a letter after some time. I'm planning this to be somewhat of a regular thing. I like keeping in touch. Hey, no issues in me. I like getting to read you guys' letters, and I mean, hey, it's entertaining. I'll get you something sometime. Mostly music, though, or doujins. <laughs> Hmm, speaking of cons, how am I to relate to you my experiences at a con over at the Mines Expo Center in Kuala Lumpur? I think that's how you pronounce it. But sorry, my experience at cons will just have to wait. Disclaimer, this is going to be a long one. You're warm, bro. Let's see, you know, a couple of weeks back, August 22nd through 23rd, there was this con known as VAX. It's a new con, VAX stands for Visual Arts Expo. Hmm. In any case, while I initially thought that it was just going to be another one of those cons, they did however uh, make postings on their Facebook page stating that they've gotten Ladybeard, a Amy Blackslegger, and back on in tow for the event. Heck, I thought that that was cool, but I still wasn't crazy about putting down the time to go. Well, I mean, yeah, you got the guys that made music for Guilty Crown, Attack on Titan, Panty and Stalking, Air Gear, Fairy Tale, and Gundam Build Fighters down along with the freaking Ladybeard, but like I've said, it w still wasn't enough. Of course, I regret thinking like that when when they freaking said that Gynax and Satellite were coming down too. Oh shit. Yep, you read that right. Freaking Gynax and Satellite making appearances down in Malaysia. As for actual con itself, well, it was okay. Considering that it was Vax's first too, there weren't that many attendees or dojins. They did have special interest panels that go on about stuff regarding ranging from Gundam, pro wrestling, internet memes, how to break into the manga scene, yada yada yada, in addition to gaming, Gaming section to PS4 simulators and t uh, t uh, trading card game tables. If you're asking me, I only went to the internet meme and pro wrestling panels, which were pretty cool. And oh yeah, I even heard they had freaking popcorn over at the Gundam panel. Damn, son. <laughs> uh, I like your dialogue, it's really nice. As for um, the merchandise, there weren't a lot on sale. I mean, there were art books, Gundams, training card games, special guest merchandise, Dojin stuff, and some Gynax and Satellite stuff for sale, but the only things that caught my eye were a Thomas Roman art, uh, art book documenting his years in Japanese anime industry, which is beyond expensive, by the way, and a Mui Love Total Eclipse t-shirt, which I can just barely fit into. But when the event shines in on the on-stage events and presentations, seriously, there's some pretty interesting insider info on in the anime industry, both in Malaysia and Japan. Now, I can't exactly remember in detail the presentation from the Malaysia side. Granted, I only stayed for like two to three of them, but I can definitely remember the presentation by Gynax and Satellite. Naturally. First off, Gynax. Okay, so the current CEO of Gynax, Horoyuki Yamaga, said that Gynax is currently working on a few projects. Ooh, that sounds good. He mentioned three of them. All anime originals. Oh, now that sounds pretty damn good. The first one is a movie project called Uru in Blue. Ooze being from 1995, wouldn't probably know the original movie Uru in Blue is continuing from, but the project has been in revision throughout the year since 1993. Holy shit, if I am not mistaken. Anyways, if I remember correctly, Yamaga-san said that Gainax officially kicked off the project back in 2009. But there were some issues here and there, and the project resumed around three years ago. From the footage that we saw, the movie is going to be a big one, centered around aircraft. Come to think of it, I really remember seeing on I remember seeing on Anime News Network's article on the project sometime last year. Can't really remember when they're planning to get the movie out, but if my memory hasn't failed me, it's due sometime in 2017-2018. It's kind of a long way away. The second one's centered around scuba diving. What? No, 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 not some fan service Brutu Shito, but a pretty legit one. Oh, okay. From what was re uh, revealed, the anime is set around the time when much of the land masses on Earth have submerged underwater due to global warming. That sounds badass. And basically, a team of scuba divers are commissioned to find out more about the stuff that goes down under. 
They haven't decided on an official English title yet, but they do have a working Japanese title for it. Didn't catch it because the on-stage translator couldn't care less, but yeah. I'm pretty damn interested in this one. I think it's uh, slated for summer next year. Definitely going to be reviewing that. The third one is a multimedia project called Ninja Soccer. What? The anime is currently in production and slated to air next year in addition to a manga release. They might have a concurrent light novel series, but I can't really remember the details for that. Anyways, according to the one of the staff members I asked over at Gainax Booth, Yim Press has already translated the first two manga volumes to Ninja Soccer, so if you're interested, check it out. And oh yeah, part of the Ninja Soccer story is set in Brazil. Oh, that's a different setting. That's unique. And there was the usual Q&A segment. Unfortunately, I really can't remember most of the questions, and I barely had enough money to record the whole thing. But the most uh, demanded question was whether there's going to be a second season of Panty and Stalking. The answer was, well, maybe I guess, but you know how Gainax is. And oh uh, yes, before I move on to the satellite presentation and art artist appearances, I should mention that they showed a Gainax documentary on the anime production process. For this one, they showcased the production process behind... Uh, Gurren Lagann. Documentary was pretty damn hilarious, I tell ya. Now for the satellite one, si uh, satellite one, the main guest was the legendary Shoji, Akawa Mori. To be frank, the presentation was interesting. The problem lied in the translator co accompanying Akawa Mori. The translator was just too nervous and still an intermediate in the language. Thankfully, a replacement was on stage near the end. Now, Kawamori's presentation was basically an intro into the Kawamori Sons really is, his life experiences and all that. He showcased the projects he's been on as well as providing us with interesting insights on how to become more creative and look at things from different perspectives. He showed us how he applied those insights into developing the Jerwalk? What the? What? The Jerwalk? What? The Jerwalk for the Macross series. I haven't seen that. As well as just ta uh, taking or talking a bit on the things that went on while he was developing the Macross series and a little on the Aquarion series as well. He mentioned though that he's trying to get the Macross series re-released worldwide a remastered format, but, but once again, legal complications keep getting in the way. I don't remember if uh, if he mentioned any upcoming projects, but he did, however, showcase a self-made low a Lego version of one of the Gerwalks from the early Macross series. I think he's planning to get that released as an official product. Heck, I'd buy one if that was the case. Also, it's kind of funny how he said that he came down to Malaysia over 20 years ago on a sightseeing trip. Heck, everyone was shocked, but of course happy. Apparently, Kawamori san said that he travels the world on a frequent basis, even showed some of his photos. And whoops, looks like this kind of guy, uh, we're kind of out of space. I mean, I, I could go on, but it would get even longer than it already is, so I think I'm forced to stop here. So I really wanted to talk about the artist appearances and the free concert at the end of day too, but I really don't want to come off as a draggy or anything. So yeah, until, until here it is, I am sorry. Aight, I hope this letter reaches you safely and in due time. There's a lot of stuff to talk about, but you know, time, things happen and whatnot. It's kind of sad, really. And thanks, friend. See you again. And thank you very much, Mike. Thank you. There is no letter for this, but it is the... I can already tell by through the packaging. Onibus Volume of Negima. I've said this before, I've never read the manga. I have actually seen the anime, the reboot in the original anime. But I know they're kind of anime original. And I remember someone very recently did send me volume one of this, actually. And I have gotten around to reading some of it. And it is something I do want to eventually read because I heard it is a very good series. And it is continuing on with a new series. And so... I'm going to assume the Chiba that sent the first one sent me this. I don't have a name here, but one of these days I will be getting around to actually reviewing this. And speaking of reviewing this said series, um, a couple of Chibits mentioned in the comments on the latest video I did on what Chibi will watch for fall 2015 of anime. Some were saying like, where is the, you know, recommendation section at? Like, you know, what will you watch for instance, when it comes to classics, like classical series. And I will be doing something about that very soon, but for now, I want to save that until I see how the upcoming season is going to be before I reveal my plans of classical anime to review. So I want to hold my horses on that. But who knows, maybe this might be on the content review for the classical section. Actually, we have a Tokyo Ghoul little letter. I, I completely missed this. Um, I love watching your Tokyo Ghoul reviews, and... You help me understand the manga even more. From Brandon. F okay, so this is the same Brandon that sent the other ones. Thank you very much, Brandon. So sweet. It's so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. 
a lot of people say my Tokyo Ghoul reviews are very good, and I, I try to put my best possible work in Tokyo Ghoul because there's just so much to talk about, and I'm thankful so many of you actually really do enjoy that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tivitz. Uh, this is a Vuster. Whoa. Vuster Omakase. Wait, isn't this the company Vuster that recently, uh, is getting very popular? I heard something about this recently. Viewster is a legal anime website that streams anime. And recently, I saw Anime News Network actually talk about them. I, I saw Anime News Network actually put an article on them. And I have seen Viewster recently on Twitter constantly, you know, talking, retweeting and stuff. And so, I've been sent something from Viewster. What in the hell? Okay, let's read this, Chief. It's, I, I, I don't even know what to expect here. So, we have Miku, obviously, like a custom-drawn Miku, which I like the art design on that. Um, opening act, let's see, Alpha Menu exclusive, Happy Mappy Miku t-shirt, Miku accessories, and different things like that. So, a bunch of different Miku accessories. Let's read this letter they sent me, because I don't even know what to expect from this. Hello from Viewster. What you are holding in your hands is an exclusive first glimpse at our new premium subscription service, Omakase. It is a new experience that combines carefully curated merchandise and premium digital content for the anime community. Like a master sushi chef, we want you to leave it to us to give you a unique and valuable experience shaped by our very best selection of items. Okay, so this is like a testing of like somewhat of a loot crate, I'm assuming. Okay, that's pretty cool so far. Omakase features items carefully selected by longtime fans of anime and manga centered around the lifestyle box that will be shipping to anime and J-culture enthusiasts on a regular basis. Ooh. These special packages celebrate iconic anime, manga, and game titles and showcase exclusive work from some of our favorite artists from around the world. Oh, that's cool. So it will also feature games, probably anime-related games. This ultra-exclusive prototype, Alpha Box, offers you a small taste of what you got on our plate in the months ahead. There's a wider release beta box going out in general audience as well. We'd be thrilled to see you share your unboxing experience to YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Feel free to tag us at uh, Viewster if you do. Well, I guess I'm doing that for you. So, this is my raw reaction. So, I, I don't... I'm guessing they got my address from, you know, my, my P.O. box in the description. And they sent me. Okay, so... Well, thank you, Viewster. Thank you. Uh, I feel honored that you're willing to send me something like this as, uh... I, I, I don't know how to feel about this. Like, Viewster. I know you're a growing company and all, but... I feel very honored you would take the time to send send me something like this, so thank you. Th this is a really kind offer you did, so if anyone from Vuster that works on your site or anything is watching this video right now, I want to say thank you. I, I I don't even know how to react to you sending me a box. Well, then I'll, I'll be honest. Since you're willing to send me something like this, I'll, I'll look at it and see how it all is. So, um, we'd also love to have your feedback on how we can best craft the perfect anime experience. Feel free to reach out to me personally. I'm not going to share the entire Twitter name, beca or name because it might be private. To share your thoughts and insights. We hope you'll enjoy what we have in store for the future. For now, enjoy this gift and feel free to spread the word. Thank you very much. Okay, so, I'm going to honestly give my honest thoughts. So, my first impressions of this, it reminds me a lot of Loot Crate. I, if you're watching me, Viewster, I'm just saying. It reminds me a lot of you, uh, Loot Crate, but anime-orientated, which I like. I like that quite a bit. If you're making this general run like a monthly type thing, where it comes at a regular basis like Loot Crate, it is a good idea. Depending on how the anime season is, like let's say, you know, summer season you know, winter season or the upcoming fall season of anime, depending on how individual seasons are and what anime they have inside of them, maybe you could center your loot crate around those general items. For instance, you know, the upcoming season, this upcoming next season is going to have a lot of, you know, One Punch Man to Haikyuu Season 2 to Noragami to other series that's coming out, and maybe you can kind of try to make it to where you're kind of used for box, these premium boxes can be focused around, you know, that said series or that said season of anime, and it would be very smart to do, because it would, since you are a video streaming site that has it to where people watch, you know, up-to-date anime that come out seasonal, it would be a smart thing to move on to with, you know, getting 
I guess, merchandise that centers around the anime that is coming out for the upcoming season. So that's my two cents there. But I, there's nothing wrong with a Miku figure now. Miku, Miku's nice. I like Miku. That, that's a really nice little cute figure. Definitely going behind me. I'm going to definitely put Miku behind me. Okay, so coming soon. And, okay, coming soon. Kill a Kill. Coming this fall. Including exclusive gold foil hardcover Kill a Kill manga volume 1. Wow, okay, so Kill a Kill's getting a manga. You just let me know something. I, I had no idea about that. Smells nice and fresh though. Okay, so it's like a Miku style box. I, I like Miku, so there's the. Oh my god, a fucking Miku shirt! Oh my god, okay, okay. Yo, you sent me the best thing of all. Oh my god, it's my fucking size, ain't it? Oh my god, I'm gonna wear that! Okay, say what you want, this is fabulous. This is fabulous. That is amazing, Viewster. That is amazing. Holy crap. I was just talking about the art style. I like the art style of this. Miku right here. And you give me... Oh. Gonna wear that. I, good impressions there. Yeah, see, if you can orientate your merchandise, like, you know, this type of style around upcoming anime season, like, you know, how last year had a lot of fate and things. If you would do shirts like that with a custom style, imagine that that would really suit the theme of the anime season. I think that would be a really good idea. A Miku tie. Oh, the iconic Miku tie. I'm so wearing this. If I ever get a suit, well, I already have a suit on. If I ever get a suit, I am wearing this. I'm going to have a Miku tie just... Oh, that, that would be so badass. Yes. <laughs> oh, crap. That's nice. And that is it. Oh, wait. We got a couple of buttons. Little Miku-style buttons. So, oh, and a card. Hmm. Okay, so, honest thoughts here. Since I now have opened up everything. One thing I would suggest... It, like I said, is the design of the themes of what you probably want to do. If you're wanting to change up the themes, like you said, on a monthly thing. Like, you're, yeah, you're trying... These special packages celebrate iconic anime, manga, and game titles and showcase exclusive works from some of our favorite artists from around the world. This is a prototype box. Yeah, okay, so what would be a really good idea, like I said? Focus it around some seasonal anime. Yes, you can have special boxes, maybe that will be like different style from classical anime, but maybe at the very least, like in one time of the new season, maybe the first, you know, season of when the anime start coming out, or the last season, like, you know, like the third month or whatever, maybe you can make an entire box orientated around that. Or, if not, try to, I guess, mix it up a little bit. Maybe you might have a classic month, a classic anime month, like a mech month, like, you know, a classical anime mech month, a classical sports genre month, like, box. Different things like that. That would also be pretty cool. But one thing that really needs to be changed, though, I'd say, would be the box design. If I were you, I would try to customize the box designs in a way that suited the theme of the box. See, that would be a really cool way to go about it. Like, make a box theme that looks kind of like this, in a way. Like, imagine if you would have had a box theme like this, like on the cover of it, it would just have that pizzazz. Like you would have like Vuster box, like your, you know, Omakase, you would have it like Vuster Omakase, like going on the side, like sideways with like Miku on it. It would look pretty damn cool. So maybe you could figure out something to do with the design with that. But yeah, there, there's my honest feedback. And I want to thank you for sending something like this to me. I, I truly am happy. We have a very big box from Jason. It's been a while since I've received a very big box and Tell you right now, this this bad boy is heavy. Thank you for your reviews and other videos. Likewise. They always entertain me and also make my day. I sent you some manga and other stuff I, I think you will enjoy. The Orihime art print is 25 by 14. If you are interested in framing it, I also thought you needed some fan art, so I sent you a drawing. I did it, so it's nothing compared to the original. Hope you enjoy the gifts and keep up the good work. Thank you. <sighs> Thank you. And classical anime, look. With different cards. Ah, oh, that's cool. Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn. That cover looks bay. That looks like a really bay cover. 
Ooh, what? What? Has English subtitles. Okay, so English subtitles. That looks freaking awesome. I like the look of that. That looks really cool. Shakugan no Shana. Season... Is this season one? Oh, no, it's S. Oh, okay. It's Shakugan no Shana S. The OVA series. Ah, oh, I missed this series. Such a good series. I loved it. I love this series. Such a good series. If you've never seen Shakugan no Shana, go watch it. Kara no Kyokai. Oh! Oh, fucking yes! Is that... Yeah, that's Shiki! Oh my god! Fucking Shiki! You know where that's going? It's going over there! I need to get around to reviewing movie 7. I, I really need to get around to re uh, reviewing the final movies of this. I really do. Such a good series. Oh my god. So that's what the figure looks like. Right there. Pretty badass. Badass. Oh man. Classic Samurai History Channel. I haven't watched a good uh, documentary in a long time. Maybe I'm not watch this tonight. Actually, I haven't watched a good one in a while. The last one I watched was Walking with Dinosaurs. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Beginners Japanese. Hmm. I use this. Some form of music. Let's see, Haruhi. Oh, it's Haruhi, yeah, it's Haruhi music. God knows, lost my music, and then something else in Japanese. So it's Haruhi music, probably the opening and ending song. I like the music of Haruhi. Ah, oh, I, lo I love that song, too, in the anime, when they're in the bunny outfit. That's so bae. Welcome to the... Welcome to the NHK? Oh, I love this series, but it's so depressing. No, oh my god, this series is so depressing. If you've never seen Welcome to the NHK, what are you doing with your life? Go watch this right now. This series is depressing as fuck, though. Like, oh my god. Like, it makes you contemplate life. That's just how... Oh. I, I don't... I can't even describe the series, because if I did, it would ruin it. But Welcome to the NHK is just, like, a 10 out of 10 recommendation. Like, you, you, you really need to start this. Two volumes. Um... Let's see. The movie... Of uh, ain't this um uh, oh god I can't remember the name I had the Rama R uh, Rama one half it, isn't this yeah it's Rama one half the movie movie two it says to be exact man this series is old this is a very old DVD I need to eventually get around to watching this like you know Fist of the North Star and something like this too because they're very old and classic Shakugan no Shana. Volume 6. Hmm, where does it take place? Ah, oh, it takes place at this. Okay. <sighs> the manga version of this series. Big fan. Whoa, something fell out. Oh, cards. Look at that. Cards. And a bookmark. Orihime bookmark. Ah, uh, Shakugan no Shana. It brings back so many memories, man. That opening song is just so good of Shakugan no Shana. Oh, more, uh, welcome to the NHK. The fucking light novel. The light novel. I, oh, I'm reading this. Oh, God. I'm reading the light novel. Um, Eureka 7. I've never seen the anime. I've heard good and bad things about the series. Volume, what volume is this? Volume 3, okay, Volume 3. Volume 2 of Eureka 7. And Volume 1, there's the character I know of. I've seen her on covers and stuff that's been rec I heard, uh, recommended to me. It, I heard this is like a mech series. I don't know if it is or not, but I heard it is a mech series. I've heard good things, though. Um, School Rumble. Whoa, this is a classical. School Rumble, Volumes 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Well, they're out of order, but uh, Volumes 1 through 5 of School Rumble. That art style is so moe and cute. Like, what the fuck? Ooh. That looks like Best Girl right there. Oh my, that looks like Best Girl. Damn it! Another Best Girl. Oh my. There's some really good Best Girls in School Rumble. I heard this is a comedy series. Like a romance comedy. Um, The Twelve Kingdoms Sea of Shadow. Whoa. That, is this a light novel? 
It's a big light novel, too. It's like a hardback light novel. By Tokyo Pop. Tokyo Pop's out of business, so. Give me some good material. I'm in a light novel craze right now. I might be reading a lot of this stuff. Um, Laura Rika 7. Right there. Volume 4. Um, Inuyasha, volume 28. Oh, this brings me back. This brings me back. Oh, I remember reading the manga. Oh, it's at that part of the series where Kikyo, the final part with her, you know, yeah, that, that, wow. So, uh, Suzuka, I've heard good things about this too. I have the anime, never watched the anime, but I've heard good things about Suzuka. I heard it's a very good slice of life that is very mature. Ooh, the artwork looks really nice. I like the artwork. Like, look at that artwork. It's really nice. Um, Suzuka Volume 2. I like the cover. The cover feels so nice. It feels really nice. I like the back, back cover, too. Damn, she's got some tits. Um, damn! Look at that girl right there. Volume 3. Best girl right there, to be honest. And volume four. Is this all the volumes of Suzuka? I think it might be all the volumes. And... Grenader volume one. And it looks like some form of poster, so let's open this. Orihime! Look at that! I've never seen that picture before of Orihime. That looks really nice. Damn. I like that. I like that Orihime. That's a really nice bleach wall scroll. And then one last thing. Supposedly thought you could use some more fan art. So this is fan art. Oh, that's adorable. Oh, it's like I'm looking at my childhood grow up right here. I don't know if you can make that out because of the lines. Hopefully you can. I'll try to tilt it because of the lighting. I'll, I'll tilt it back and forth. But it's Naruto Hinata with their child. You see the little baby hand and stuff? That takes me back. Damn. Okay, so that is pretty much it. Okay, so there is one more package, and the cheap of that scented is no name, but judging by the way the package feels, it feels what I think it feels like. I saw a cheap make a comment on Facebook about something like this, and I think it is what I think it is. If it is, uh, yep it is. It is bandages. Now, you're thinking, like, why the fuck did someone send you bandages? Someone says I should try to dress up as one of the main villains of Gintama and wrap the bandages around my head. And I'm gonna go try it. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it turns out. If it turns out good, it turns out good. If it turns out bad, well, fuck it. They're just like, yeah. So, we'll see how it goes. I'll be right back in just a second. Well, I might have messed it up a little bit, but... I think it looks fabulous. I mean, clearly, you guys are just jealous of this look. I mean, look how fab. Just like, yes. But all joking aside, it looks like someone just smacked me in the face and I had to go to the hospital. That's kind of how it looks. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, it's been a very fun vlog. You all have a wonderful day or night, wherever you live, and... Please be safe. Chibi out.